Time zone has it is I, Gloss and Gadgets. No, I'm not pro who uh, has had a shave and, and put on a wig. No, it is I, Leone, also known as Gloss and Gadgets. And I am DMing tonight the last two episodes of our sponsored main town press game, uh, Lost Horizon Semblance. <laughs> However, pro, if you're watching, we miss you, we love you, and uh, we'll, we'll speak soon, okay? Okay. Oh, right. I, I know how to DM. I know how to do this. I remember how to be in front of the computer. I'm not just a DM. Um, so what are we playing? We're playing Lost Horizon Semblance, which is obviously set. Uh, we are using the Mage Hand Press game rules. It is a 5e supplement, but you don't need to use 5e. You can use the SRD, which is free and anyone can use it. And it's great like that. And that's what we are using. Um, this game was sponsored because Mage Hand Press had a uh, Kickstarter, which is complete now. And it was very, very, very successful. All the things that I wanted to be unlocked were unlocked. So I'm very excited to see that and you can actually go to their web store right now and uh, pre-order the start to kit which has all the little bits and pieces you need to get going so you too can have your in fire on trouble in space adventures um so yeah that's all that we are also sponsored by by vc 3d which make amazing 3d printed objects i would go grab mine but they're behind me and um they have crowns and christmas things balancing on them at the moment but the reason why we recommend vc 3d is because um their prints are amazing uh put it quite frankly <laughs> and simply you literally get them and they are so smooth you can paint them straight away without having to do any sanding or filling or anything like that and we're all about the quality here at gold heart group um, we do have donations open by the way so if you'd like to hit donate you can affect the game in various different ways uh, there's information just below in a pretty little image um, about all the wonderful things that you can do um there's anything else i need to tell you probably not so why don't we do a recap and uh, get on with it because um, we're going to have some fun today, players. Uh, that I at least can promise you. So a recap on what's been going on. And I'm going to recap probably a couple of episodes here so that we're all on the same page. Because I've been behind the screen. And so I've been noticing a few little things that possibly our players haven't noticed. Uh, but the party decided at one point to go see Dr. Thron, who they then confronted with all the revelations that have happened in the game thus far. They accidentally on purpose killed the doctor using a killy robot. Uh, and I'm, I'm having faces made at, at me behind the scenes. I don't know if we've transitioned over, but uh, there's lots of uh, snickering and like oh, shocked faces. No, yes, it was accidentally on purpose. Like you, you knew what you were doing, okay. That's all I'm going to say <laughs> about that. Um, <clears throat> it came to light that uh, investors from the firm were watching, basically kind of doing a fallout style type of observing this 
experiment go down um <clears throat> And they kind of were like quality controlling overseeing the lab. Uh, they learned that the firm put this uh, project together to develop a weapon. The party definitely think that the weapon is this weird kind of flood-like infection that seems to be gripping the entire station. Uh, they then met up with a wonderful them friend called uh, Nevaire, uh, who was an Imperial Empire spy from a well-known dark elf house. Uh, they told them that they wanted a sample of the corruption and that they heard rumors that there is a cure in, <coughs> in the lab of Dr. Itsuko. So the party are heading over to the lab of Dr. Itsuko. I hear this uh, renders a spacewalk. And given that one of our party is an android and the other one um, lives in a in a big sister suit, uh, only one of our members needs a space suit. And with the party, with Nav uh, there in tow, it is here we are going to begin our session. Right, crew of the SS Black Hawk. Let me set the scene for you. It is dark. There are those weird brain tentacles everywhere. It's a little bit gross, a little bit gory. It's very, very quiet as well, unnaturally quiet. The kind of quiet you hear on a ship when no one's doing any work, you know, that hum of engines and the hiss of the air filters. You step out into this hallway and of course you need to find a spacesuit. Where would you like to go? What would you like to do? And don't forget to unmute. Um I'm trying to remember if we if we knew where we could get a spacesuit. Like I think it was being blocked by something. But I'm, uh, oh, okay, so I'm going to, uh, I gave it to Elizabeth, the the tablet that kind of has the rundown. I, I will probably just hand the tablet to Esme because technology vexes Elizabeth. Um, well, it appears to me that if we keep going this way through the flesh, that we will eventually come to either the hangar or the med bay, I'd be able to procure a life suit there. Oh, which would be worse, being at storage or being at the med bay? I don't know. I guess that's why we find out. Great. Um, uh, I'm going to, you know, just kind of be a little bit more defensive with the like pipe spear that I have and, um, kind of keep being in front okay so marching orders so we got Thus in the lead who is second I will be second okay and, and bring up the rear bring it up the rear yet, question right? question we've had a lot of time pass we knew that we would be in a a dead magic zone for about an hour. That's been that's been pretty rough on our uh, our casty friends. <laughs> um, how how long do we have left in the dead magic okay. zone? Because I we we wanted to do things while it was active, but how are we looking now? Yeah. Okay, so some time has passed. I would say you probably have about fifteen minutes left in this dead zone. All right. So don't get caught by anything. Yeah. I can hear the wink, okay? <laughs> while, while it is particularly bad that we do have a dead zone active, I would say it's also equally good because no one can detect us with magic at the moment. We should take this to our advantage. You're right. Mm. Okay. Um, have we caught up with Navar yet? That's, that's the question. 
Mm. You don't see them. Okay. Um, so we know that I'm in the front and I've been in their vic- I was in their vicinity because we got I got close to them when we were when I was chasing them down the first time that we met. I specifically I, I sniffed them. I know what they sniffing is. I just <laughs> they're sniffing. <laughs> The snaz knows. Uh, we're not in a day. I, I can't really. It's not a magic ability, me being able to sniff out other people. So um wanted to see where they were. If they're at least going, if they are in the direction that we are going, if we're going towards them or away from them. Roll me a perception check. Down what do you person. smell with your special nose? What do I smell? Roll me a with- smell check. One minute, that kind of brings back a memory of a game, but I don't remember what game I was sniffing in. There was a couple <laughs> of. There was a joke a very long time ago because that's how, it was a long time ago because it's fuzzy. And, the, and yeah, the joke was roll me a smell check. It must have been back when I was on another channel or something like Maybe. that. I feel like you could smell Zirin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think Leia would have sniffed. <laughs> Okay. In that game, I, I need to know that when you said goodbye, you were like, smell you later. No. Now you can smell him like down the hall. <laughs> then it's just that goodbye when you say goodbye, but you were heading the same direction. So you end up walking together another like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I rolled a 10. <laughs> I'm okay. second. Well, you, you, you have a really good nose. It's been messy. You know, you, you know this, but there is so much like fleshy flesh smell, you know, that smell of butcher shop in this in this hallway. It's kind of masking the, the smell of your agent friend. Understandable. My nose has been messing with me since we entered the dead the dead magic line. Leonie, you trying. don't have to use the flesh euphemism. You can just say meat line. It makes me uncomfortable, okay? <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. Nothing is, not that these, and these things aren't like, I'm just going to keep moving them aside so that we can get through them. It was just, so, you know, meat vine is interesting words, but they're more like veins, you know, just like there they mm. grown, like roots. Yes, meat roots. I'm more comfortable with that. Prehensile veins. Yeah, they're, they're meat roots. They're up on the wall, they're hanging off the ceiling, they're growing along the ceiling. This stuff is spreading. I don't like it. And I can't do nothing about it right now. But poke them and move on. I don't I don't have a <laughs> meat vine be gone. Like I can't <laughs> God. Uh what happens when we, because we already, we did get a sample of it already, right? So I don't have to, if any cutting is happening, what, what happens when I like cut one off, like in half or something? There's a high pitch screeching and it retracts. Oh. I would do an impression, but I would feel very bad for our audience. Yeah. <coughs> They're looking for a sample. I've got a lot of them, like running through my chassis. You know, that's fair. That's fair for me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how long would you say it takes us to reach? Because we're following the the tablet, kind of like it's like a, a go map, like a map, uh, to just really just through this hallway. Which one do we end up at? The med bay or the? That's your choice, really, where you want to go, because you're the one with the map. Are you going to the med bay? Are you going to the storage? Or would you like to ask me which one's closer? Where do you want to go? Which one is closer? Because I don't want to be out here. I know technically we're all affected already, but I... Storage. Storage is closer. Storage will have more than just a life suit there, too. Yeah, actual weapons. Hopefully. Uh, so yeah, storage first. Okay. Up when you're there. You continue down the hallway. You've been quiet, you slow, you 
Lau, do you, what kind of pace are you doing in your marching order? Ooh. I would hazard going somewhat slowly. The texture of the floor is a little different and a little bit more sloshy right now. I'm not wearing shoes. Why do you remind me of these things? I'm sorry for saying it out loud. I don't actually have a lot of tactile feeling in my feet. Um, oftentimes when I say these things, it's because I hear them. Um, but the sound I can hear. Forward. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to move at a slow pace. Okay. So as you continue down the hallway, you notice that the growth of the uh, flesh infection is increasing. Mm. Just like in the area, like it, like we are going into more densely infected area. Yes. Yeah. Um. There's still lots of room to move. As I said, it's quite thick on the wall. You also notice it pulsing and twitching, almost as if oh. it's alive. Could it not, though? You turn a corner and you pause. This. Because on the door of the storage room is this large growth. Wrapped up in this growth, you see an infected human face still intact but decaying they make an uncomfortable moaning noise as if they're in pain Ooh. you see their rib cage also kind of grown into this infection but it too pulses and you can tell that this thing would open like a door Uh, Welcome to Horror of Glass and Gadgets. <laughs> oh. But you making it that level doesn't make me feel nearly as bad when I destroy it. <laughs> My jimmies are thoroughly rustled. <laughs> do we want to do something about that person? Other than go through it? I was going to suggest putting it out of its misery. But does it still need to be alive to go through it? It, so the, um, if you imagine typical cipher doors, so a nice archway and it's literally connected corner to corner to corner and this thing's in the middle connected to the door. Okay. So we could just go around it. Which is what I'm going to do so I don't got to look it in the eye when I'm... Well, if I may just describe the map for you. So you've just come around a corner, you've peeked, you've seen it, you can see the door. Okay. So you have to go past it to get to it, unless I know you go into a vent. <laughs> that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> which bad idea do you want to do? <laughs> yes, which bad idea would you like to do? My options. Here, or, or, to, or, to, or to go through this thing or, or go into this lovely convenient vent, you say. You can see it on the map and everything, the vent. Uh, well, I mean, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Going down the vent, man. Down the vent. I, I do still want to kind of, I take your suggestion and kind of, Oh, that thing is totally gonna. Yep, I'm going down the vent. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys come in, I say, stepping down <laughs> into the vent so that we don't have to go forward to this thing. I, I still want to put it out of misery, but it's like a distance away from us. I will do it. Part of these decisions are to keep y'all safe. I understand that, but this person is in pain. I will do it. I can say tell none of you have played Dead Space. <laughs> <laughs> Just I put in that out. But I was not very good at it. 
<laughs> you didn't okay. get to the, you didn't get to the chest people <laughs> okay 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 all right okay I just, just climbed back out of vent okay come on let's go we're doing the thing as you climb out of the vent thus you do hear that sound of small feet hitting metal <laughs> Just gonna slowly put the top back on. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's... I don't want to make it unceremonious. It's just just going up to it and going, and then keep moving. But it's the quickest way that I could think is to just kind of. All the pulsing is coming from up here, so this is where it's still being held. I don't. I don't have any type of social morality because my curse is feral. So <laughs> it, it really is like I walk like around it and then the back of its neck to sever any connection to its brain and kind of keep moving. It's not really a thing for me. I mean, I'm, I expected some type of response from the thing. Does it go? Like so you're going up to chop it in the neck that's what you're doing I, I sorry i wasn't aware that that's what you were doing and you weren't just discussing it with the party no yeah that, i'm sorry yes that thing cool Well me con saving throw please because as you enter the vicinity of this thing its chest opens with this crack and ooze as it sprays a weird gaseous green mm. gas at you in the face. <laughs> I am getting so many Silent Hill vibes right now. I love it. <laughs> we once forgotten the hell will be truly silent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> will you adopt this nurse? <laughs> <laughs> Is it some kind of pyramid scheme? Oh, happy October! <laughs> happy October, everybody! <laughs> happy. Oh October. no! Ooh. I rolled two. Ooh, lovely. Thus, mm -hmm. you take. Actually, roll, you can roll me your own your own damage. Roll me three d six, please. Three d six. Oh, now you roll good. Fifteen. You take fifteen points of poison damage. And I need everyone to roll me initiative. Ooh, right. I'm gonna use real dice if that's okay. You can use like... whatever you like. I bought all my shiny clack clacks and I wanna roll my shiny clack clacks. Roll your shiny clack clacks. I got a five. I shouldn't have rolled my shiny clack clacks. <laughs> oh, no. Why are your shiny clack clacks mean? They mean. <laughs> clack clack jail. <laughs> Go to. Uh oh. Clack clacks pulls. Yeah, fucky wucky, oh. now you have to go in the forever box. <laughs> Wait, why am I clack I, clack I have initiative? a question. Yes, you have a question. Okay. We're, have we healed at all? Did you take any long rests? We took a short That's rest. Some of us uh, spent yeah, things and we got guys. healing. Yeah. Did you, do, did you use that short rest when I was not DMing? We sat in the uh, in like the room. I, That's when I made the the weapons for us. Yeah, if you sat. remember, we had like a. I, I asked for healing. I got a nano thing. I also used like a bunch of. I I don't know what you did, but um, I, I healed. Yeah, I used hit dice. But I think I rolled my hit dice. Nice. Well, I'm dead. If that's the case. What? Dead? You can't be I dead. I don't think I rolled my hit days. What's your max HP? Um, my current HP is eight. And I just what's what's your max HP? I'm, I'm trying to see. Hold on. And then you tell me it's like eight. <laughs> Please don't be eight. No. I mean, I got no business being beefier than you. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know you have more hit points than me. I've, I've got 20. Because to die, to insta-die, 
you have to take 15 and then 15 again. Okay. Like say, say, say your max HP is 15. 15 would take you to zero and then you have to take 15 to reduce you down to your max HP, which would then be an insta-kill. So technically I would have to hit 30. Okay. Well, you didn't hit 30. Um, Are you unconscious? Yeah, you're in charge. No. With my max HP, which uh, I think is 28. Yeah, you're definitely not dead. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Do you, you definitely have more than I do. And I'm in the negative. Then you're unconscious, my dear. I'm unconscious. That's great. <laughs> Elizabeth, what's your uh, <laughs> initiative roll, please? That that was a 13. Spoopy number for the spoopy month. Okay, so you see Bruce go up to this creature and almost like a proximity mine this is hit with this gaseous like wave and it lets out this awful howl as Thus is hit with this green wave you see them cough for a moment before they stagger and they drop to the floor Elizabeth you are first on our initiative what would you like to do we're still in the dead magic zone so I, I can't do my fun stuff uh, I, I will go up and try to drag them uh, out of the vicinity and try to stabilize them, if I may. You certainly do. Roll me a medicine check, please. That is a 10. You're stable through snow death rolling saves for you. Yay. <laughs> How am I the doctor with a minus one medicine? What happened there? You managed it. You were Get supposed this. to be the doctor. This is your job. You have a doctor in art history. It's different. <laughs> oh, no. Oof. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Rough. Yes, I'm here to diagnose portraits, not people. <laughs> Next up. Are you saying I'm not a work of art? <laughs> Next up on the initiative is our flesh creature, who... Ooh. Shuts its rib cage, lets out another moaning howl, and the two there are eight prongs around it that hold up, hold it up on the door frame, and it releases four spiked tentacles. Ooh. You're currently out of range, but this thing does have a bit of reach on it, and it is holding an action just to be clear. Esme, you are next. Okay. Um, Esme is going to uh, use their... Uh, they have a phaser embedded in their palm like Iron Man. Um, mm -hmm. So they're they're just going to uh, point and, and try to shoot it. Um, it. Plus six modifier to that. Uh, 19 AC. That only hits. Great. And it does 2d4 radiant damage. It will take uh, <laughs> five. Hopefully it takes five points of radiant damage. So you shoot at this thing. And then I'm going to move in front of um, uh, Elizabeth and Thus to sort of give them some cover. Excellent. Thus, you're, you're fine. You are unconscious but stable. Elizabeth, what would you like to do? Uh, let me double check to see. Uh, I do, in fact, have a pew pew. A pew pew? Uh, but I don't know what damage my pew pew does. Uh, we have our pew pews? I do have a pew pew. I just don't have noted what kind of damage it does. I am so sorry. We'll make it up. It's 1d10. All right, cool. I, w I will roll my pew pew, and since I have the advantage of being in a suit, and thus do not fear a recoil damaging my arm, I will turn it sideways Ooh. with intent to kill. 
Oh. Oh, that's mm. just an eight. An eight? Did you say? I think so. I'm look. It's always weird how this like rolls twice. Yeah, you go to the left. There is a button at the top of your sheet that'll let you yeah, change it from normal. advantage to normal. Yeah. yeah so is. whatever, whatever's the first one on the left. On the left. So that's an eight. Okay. You unfortunately miss. I'm afraid. Always miss with the kill shot. Uh, the flesh thing. Uh, it can't reach anything at the moment. It just moans, wiggles its tentacles at you. Wiggles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's me. You are next. We have to get past this thing. I have a very bad idea. I got my jump pad. We can jump at any angle from it. I would lose the jump pad, but we'd be able to shoot ourselves through it, perhaps? I think leaving this thing to possibly come after us is the worst idea, as would be getting close to it given the prongs. Our best bet would be just to gun it down where it stands. Or hangs. That seems like a wiser idea. Am I? No, I'm unconscious. <laughs> Yes, you are. You, you could be awake and incoherent. <laughs> <laughs> I have incoherent mumblings to say. <laughs> um, I rip it apart if you throw me at it. Oh, gosh. Let's not throw ourselves at it, then. Um, I'll go for another phaser shot. Okay. My, my palm. Uh, that's another 19. <laughs> Lovely. And it's going to be uh, three points of radiant damage. Are you sure we don't want to just move it? I'm not I'm not fantastic with this. <clears throat> at the end of the round, as you've been shooting at it, it's lost some tentacles. And your radiant damage does seem to be very, very effective. It seems to be searing the flesh. However, at the end of the round, it pops out another tentacle that just bursts from the infection that envelops it and it attaches itself to the wall and it gains some hit points back me some top of the round elizabeth i'm gonna keep pew pewing okay well to hit Hey, that's better. 17. That hits. Throw me some damage, please. Lay uh, damage. Is there a damage button? or Should it have rolled the damage along with it? Sorry, uh, just ro just roll me one Just roll me one d10. Uh, so it's 2d4 plus 4 radiant. Two no, just 2d4 radiant. I don't know where it's getting the plus from. What's the title? Swarm Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the roll commands I never use this platform. If you just hit where it says Swarm Pistol um, in the actual chat itself, you can just click that. It'll roll it for you. Oh, perfect. So that's just four damage. I don't know why this is saying plus four right now. Is adding the plus six from your stats somewhere? That's fine, but it's radiant damage, correct? Yes. Yeah. Flesh thing? Hisses, moans, can't meet you, can't do anything. We... As, as me. We have ten minutes of dead magic left to be able to get where we need to go undetected. Horizon will come back, and Horizon will know what we've been. What do you want to do here, Elizabeth? I think our best bet is still to deal with this creature, especially with Thuth indisposed. 
All right. We can't afford losing another body, as it were. Once again, you pew from my palm. Uh, it's much worse. That's going to be an 11 versus its AC. I'm afraid that you just go a little bit wide. It's a tiny amount. Tiny amount. It's like it's got probably some like holes in it from where the like, and it just shoots right through. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Top of the round. It grows another prong, even though you shut some off, and it gains some hit points. You are slowly killing it. Just slowly. <laughs> it's little. Slowly. Little. Elizabeth, what would you like to do? I'm, I'm gonna keep shooting. Pew, pew. I don't want to go close. <laughs> oh, that's a bad roll. That's a seven. <laughs> you go a lot wider <laughs> than as we did. Why is it adding this weird bonus round? Flesh thing can't reach you. Doesn't doesn't move. It's, it's firmly attached to this wall, by the way. And it's Esme. It's your turn. All right. There has to be something else I can do. This isn't working. Well, I could just run up and try to stab it. I have a sword. I could use my sword instead. I'm much better with my sword. I'm gonna use my sword. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna run up at it. As you run up at it, I need you to just quickly roll me a dexterity saving throw as you try to dodge its tentacles. Okay. I rolled a 17, and then plus my dex is a 22. Yeah, you avoid these things like the android you are. It's almost inhuman what you do. You just bend in directions that no human should be able to bend at that speed. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually like I'm I'm held together a little bit with the same stuff that thing is made of too. <laughs> it's just oof, feel it coming and move around. All right, and then I'm going to come up to it and and just try to slash it across with my laser sword that I draw. And oh, that's a that's a much better roll. That's going to be twenty four versus its AC. Oh yeah, slice it. Nice. Or as Lionhead Gaming has just uh, subbed for the fifth oh, month. Thanks. Stab it, stab it, stab it good. Yay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Give him a little razzle dazzle. Uh, it's going to be much worse. Uh, five radiant damage, but not not, not too bad yet. Not too bad. Um, yeah, five radiant damage. And that will be it for me this turn. This thing looks very bad. Sweet. It's like oozing and dripping stuff onto the floor. Less sweet. <laughs> Elizabeth, top of the round. You could taste it and see. I I can't taste. Uh, I don't, I don't I don't have the plug-in for that. Unconscious person, please be unconscious. <laughs> I was gonna run up and punch it, but my, my pew pew is better than my punch punch. Um <laughs> that, that's a 14. Yes, it does. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm going to tell oh. you now, it has one HP. Let's hope they're all more than one. <laughs> hey, that's a three. <laughs> End of the round. As you blast it with your pew pew, Elizabeth, you see... This creature let out a huge roar. Its tentacles unpin from the door. Its chest opens. This huge ooze of gore drops to the floor before it slides down the door. Its head rolls. It is dead. And the door is clear. I'm just enjoying your faces right now. I'm trying to figure out if I knew that person. Don't know if I did. You can roll me an investigation check if you would like to look a little bit closer. I would like to. I am curious. I rolled a 19. I wish I didn't roll so high. 
Um, for my investigation check, that's going to be 22. Because it's on another document. As you look closer, you notice that this has the features of Chief Science Officer Dr. Diego. You notice the uniform rotten, decayed. His features, just mostly the head shape and the shape of the skull, which as an android, you're able to identify better than your counterparts, but it's mostly the uniform, the white lab coat with the logo of the SS Black Hawk on it. This is Dr. Diego. This is what we will become if we do not hurry. Well, I guess I've been promoted then. And I'll throw Thuth over my shoulder like a sack of potatoes. I suppose that's technically correct, if not a little cavalier. Congratulations, Doctor. Thank you, Esme. We'll move through the door. Oh, Ryan, you're a legend. All right, let's make more of that bad decisions. <laughs> so, do you go it? Do you go into the storage room? Mm -hmm. It it takes some time to like peel it open. It has that lovely moist, like wet ripping noise as you peel the door open. Yeah. Thank you. I, I just like to do, I don't like to do the sound effects. I just like your imagination to fill in the blanks, but thank you for doing that. Sorry. <laughs> and you enter the storage room. And inside, yeah, there's a little bit of growth, but there's not much. You find an array of potions, weapons, gear, health potions. Let's stuff some of these in thuce. <laughs> Just directly into their stomach. <laughs> Feed Thuz a healing potion. One of those injectable, mm. like an EpiPen. Ah, yes. <laughs> no, no, full on like Pulp Fiction adrenaline. Yeah, we're just like, Mia right Wallacing <laughs> Thuz real quick. <laughs> uh, my best, uh, my best is... So you got a little bit of a dry cough. That uh, poison was a quite corrosive on the lungs. <laughs> Tastes like Saturday night on the ship. <laughs> Am I dead? No, you are very much alive. It was a close call, though. That was Dr. Diego did this to you, or something masquerading as his form. One less person I have to worry about saving. <coughs> I don't think we have to worry about saving anyone except for ourselves. That's a sad thought. And perhaps our new friend, Navar. Um, and then I'm going to, like, actually look around to where we are because in my brain we're still in the hallway. You're um, not. You are definitely in that storage room. Um, I c can I move yet? That's the question. How much... <clears throat> Roll me um, 5d4 plus 6. I think I'm doing that right now. It's a good one. A good you one. picked up a good one. You, yeah. I didn't know you were that beat up, okay? <laughs> I just took over. Give a girl a break. <laughs> I was like, just so. Um, <laughs> I take over and I kill someone. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> that would have been a good way to come in on this. <laughs> just saying. <sighs> Okay. Um, I would like to 
look around, I think more, you said it was, it wasn't a lot of growth in here, but there's still some, it's just mm-hmm. like on the edges from like where, like where you first come in, it's like, it's trying to start invading. Well, you'll notice that the growth, mostly around the door where, um, the uh, infected corpse of uh, Dr. Diego was, mm-hmm. and also around the vents. Mm. Oh, bad thing to go on there. Um, uh, I just, I would like to see what else we could get out of it because this was the storage. So that I feel like there should be. There's a lot of stuff in here. So AKA, AK, the DM is gearing you up for the final battle next episode. Please take advantage of it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, hint, why, hint. Why are not you being subtle. I would like to have a Harley Poison Ivy montage shopping trip inside of this storage. <laughs> <laughs> so please and thank you. Yes. You totally can. Because I'm going to throw some really nice hard stuff at you. Absolutely. So what, what, whatever gear you want, you can technically have. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Except the gear that we really want, Elizabeth. Magic. <laughs> uh, that that's coming. It'd probably yeah, it's go coming. active. It's about, like about, about any minute now. Yeah, any as soon now. as we step out of this room. So let's find um we'll find Thus a life suit, which shouldn't be it's probably in a closet marked life suits. <laughs> Good to guess. Um then anything we might need. We're going to Dr. Atsuko's lab. What might we need for a lab? There to find what we're looking for. Um. Oh, um, is there a, a terminal that is in the storage unit that would have updates to um, what we would like base inventory, so that uh, we could we could see what type of medicine and stuff we would have on the ship, so we know what we if so we'd know whether or not we have to go to Med Bay. We already know what's going to be there. We're all having to go. You can certainly find a terminal, but I need you to roll me the appropriate computer data check. Yeah, I think it would be a data check. I know that that is what I'm looking for. Data. Data check. Data. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Someone else do it. It's a computer. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. I recently watched that. That's great. You just had a needle plunged into your chest and now you're jamming on a keyboard. I think I I think it's gonna go like this and I'm gonna be like, I guys, yeah, I check this stuff. Oh god, it's fine. Um I'm just gonna go put on my suit. We are also going to find more things like that. Um mm. I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. We have a lot of samples of this stuff. Perhaps we could try to experiment with a little little bit to see what it's weak to, what it's vulnerable to, instead of struggling Mm. from afar and put something together to that end. Yes. I agree with that plan. My instinct is fire for some reason. (laughs) That's a solid instinct. (laughs) Right, but do we want fire in space? I think so. Could be wrong. I, I I want fire in space. I mean, Who I would knows? like to remind you of our catchphrase. Right. Um, <laughs> so Esme would like to take you. out uh, their circuitry kit, which should have um, some measure of like a, a, a soldering iron, I guess, and see how it reacts to heat. Um, like this fleshy stuff on the door. Ooh. Yeah, it does that hissy thing. It retracts, but you notice that your radiant damage did more. Interesting. All right, so focus on radiant. Heat works as well, but not as effective. I'm gonna look to uh, Elizabeth. Do you know anything that does that type of damage? Like casty wise? Casty wise, no. It would have to be some kind of weaponry. I'm sure we can find something here, though. Your standard. Oh, no, it's just uh, if you did, I was when we got that out of the demo. I was gonna tell you to hit me with it. <laughs> it's the I'm only way checking. I can I learn things. I don't think I have them. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Oof. It's the only uh, way I can learn things. So I would need to take your stuff and get hit with it. They <laughs> might have some matter of like, um. 
scroll in here, but none of us are divine casters, I think. Yeah, I would I would need someone. I would need a divine caster to hit me. Yeah. Um <laughs> way I could soak it up. I don't know to that end. Um, but maybe there's there's some sort of weapon in here that does it. I know that your standard repeater will do that. I'm just gonna toss this again. <laughs> They all do radiant damage. Uh, so we can load up. Oh, I do. I ha I, ha I has. And oh, I have two things. Hey, 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 we're okay. <laughs> Lock and load. Um, and while the party is uh, taking inventory and stocking up, we're going to actually take a quick break here. Hmm. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for the subs it's wonderful thank you so much um <laughs> and i hope you're enjoying uh horror with leone <laughs> <laughs> as i describe scenes that i saw in dead space and other sci-fi horror <laughs> movies <laughs> so don't go anywhere we're just going to take a quick break um we're going to sort up some things out in the background as well uh, enjoy the background music and whatever that is on the pause i don't quite remember because i'm not producing i don't look at things when i don't produce and we will be right back so don't go anywhere <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.
Hi everyone, it is I, Got Some Gadgets, sorry I didn't know how to unmute myself because normally I do my stream deck, but I've unplugged everything because uh, you may not have uh, heard, but um, I'm the producer for uh, Motherland's RPG coming this uh, Sunday, shameless plug, um, so I hope you'll come and check that out. Uh, while I'm not playing, I will be behind the screens running everything, but that's why everything's unplugged because I'm rejiggering everything. But hi, thank you for uh sticking around while we had our break we all had something to eat it was very nice it was like we were eating at a table with friends and we also sorted out our very large shopping trip so you didn't have to uh endure that for hours and hours and then as we discussed whether or not uh elizabeth could uh carry a cannon on the back with a strength of 10 and so on and so forth <laughs> but you are of course watching goldheart gaming and we are of course playing lost horizon semblance um sponsored by May Chan Press who recently had a very successful Kickstarter um, which funded all the goodies and it was very very good and I'm very very proud of them um, but they do have pre-orders open for their starter kit which if you too would like your in trouble on fire and in space dramas where you can live out to your Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Stargates, all the other stars, Lex, Babylon 5, you name it, whatever you want, fantasies, then this is the supplement for you. It is uh, based in the 5e system, but you don't need to use 5e. You can use whatever system you really want if you feel like hacking it, or you can just use the SRD as we are. We are also sponsored by, by VC3D Works, who make absolutely wonderful tabletop uh, 3D prints, such as Fate Ends Dice Towers, which are gorgeous. I haven't got one yet, but I will. I just need to decide which one because there are many. And of course, the uh, the mythic mugs, which I'm a big fan of, although I hear that Velvet has recently beat me in the collection of them. Um, I only have three. Velvet has six. Just check it. Is it six now, Velvet? Uh, like eight now? <sighs> I got some catching up to do, clearly. <clears throat> How many of them are painted though? None. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have you beat. I have two that are painted. <laughs> okay. But yes, um, the reason why we, um, we're so proud to be sponsored by them is because they're the best 3D prints out there. They're so smooth. No filling, no sanding, unless you, you know, you're super, super fussy. Um, you could just literally paint them as soon as they arrive with a little bit of priming. It's so good. You get 12% off if uh, you use our code, which is GoldHeartFan. And literally the link is down below. Go check them out. Go look at all the lovely things and add them to your cart. Maybe buy them later because that's what I do. I just add stuff to my cart and then remove stuff that I can't afford. Oh, but a quick recap before we went to a break and had a little something to eat and then sorted out our shopping. The party learned what it's what it means to be DM'd by Gloss and Gadgets, aka you don't running charge in 
into a suspicious thing hanging on a wall that looks not dangerous because it it will smack you very hard possibly with poison it's possibly a trap you will be unconscious but you won't die <laughs> uh, that uh, regeneration mechanics is one of my favorite mechanics and I really 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 like describing gross fleshy scenes that I've seen in the Dead Space series but the party are currently in a storage unit uh, they have just geared up and they are on the way to the lab because they need to find a cure and maybe do a bit more research on what this stuff is and so with that a quick recap we resume our session <laughs> that's that's a cue okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay in the window. I should really not look at that. <laughs> That's terrible. Ah, right, Parsi. So you're all geared up. You've got potions. I heard something about glitter. I heard something about marbles. We did look at a titan suit at one point. <laughs> what would you like to do? Where would you like to go? We need to go to the airlock. We want to create our own here. I think the airlock is a better idea that we should do it instead of what I said the second time. <laughs> <clears throat> this is like fine. We'll go to the already made one. <laughs> the pre made airlock. The pre made airlock. We all like making ourselves, uh, making DIY projects, but maybe a do-it-yourself airlock is not the best idea right now. <laughs> we would like to go to the uh, airlock. Yeah, so we can... Spacewalk. Oh. Hmm? So you're going to go do your spacewalk? Spacewalk time. <clears throat> So you head to the nearest airlock as guided by your map on your little tablet. And to be honest, apart from the hum of the air filters and the engines, all you really hear are your footsteps. Metal on metal as they're quite heavy. You proceed down the hallways. The growth everywhere. And as you examine some of it that you pass, you notice that it's organic matter. You see a stripped, curled up hand in one, body parts in another. I would like to take a step to the left away from them. Thank you. Well done. You have learned to lesson, Thus. <laughs> <clears throat> you come upon a scene. There are eight heads in a circle. Blood splatter curved up on the head. But these heads all have little tentacles. They're not moving, by the way. Each one with the signs that they have been cut by a laser sword. Bloody footprints water the ray in the direction of the airlock. They're not anywhere near us, are they? They're just like, we just look over and just see this, like- They're kind of like in front of you, like on the way, in the direction oh. that you're going. So, so it's just, yeah, just gonna like baseball bat those out the way so we can- They're just on the floor. Oh, they're on the floor. I thought they were yep. like, they're they were floating for some No, reason. they're on the floor. They're all just kind of like, you know, it's just like the neck, but the neck is like tentacles and then you got the skull and they're just like there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Long yeah. I'm poke one, see if it do anything, and if it doesn't, I'll move on. <laughs> no, nope, they're, they're quite inactive. Okay, That's... inactive, inactive means good. I thought we would have to play croquet for a second. Right? <laughs> Strong <laughs> suspicion. 
not that good at hacky sack, but <laughs> somewhere there's a sack that needs hacking. Um, oof. D hmm. Hmm. When uh, when you say eight of them like in a circle, is it like? I just have to ask for posterity's sake. Is when you say a circle, do you mean like they're just kind of laying there, or do they look like they were specifically they were placed there? In yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> is only it... you and Buns would ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> the scene looks like someone was in the middle of that circle, and then they carved these things up. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And then they so walked away coolly as there was an explosion okay. in the background. Nice. We've seen the after effect of a cool fighting montage. Oh yes. man, we missed the cool fighting montage. <laughs> it's probably rock music playing from <sighs> we don't understand. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna follow the carnage. Yeah, actually, <laughs> this is where we were going anyway. Oh, you know what? We didn't see our friend earlier. We didn't see our friend earlier. They have an invisibility cloak. You heard metal footsteps in the vent. They already went into the vent. They've already been here. They cut up everyone and are getting ahead of us because they don't think they want to make good on our deal if they can help it. Oh. They win either way. Well, we're supposed to go to the airlock. We're already in a suit. We're already headed this way. And I'm not going back into a vent. We don't have to go into a vent. We need to get to the airlock. I'm running as much as I can. All right, let's go. <clears throat> so you eventually come to the airlock. It's just the big red button, mm -hmm. airlock. Doors, doors, perspex, so you can see whatever you're injecting in space. All right. Spotless, by the way. Hold up my arms, and my um, my chassis uh, sort of um, comes out of the backpack that I wear. A uh, helmet goes on, and the the sides of the face seal, the shoulder pads come up, and it goes down the arm, clink 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 clink, in a in a row. Um, it doesn't do fingers; it's not like dexterous enough for that. But it just sort of closes around my gloves, and then same thing down uh, waist, hips, through the legs, around the knee joint. Uh, down to the boots where it seals around just like the hands. Awesome. My life suit's on. <clears throat> you step into the oven? Mm -hmm. Yes. So. The door closes for a moment. The spear's down. I don't like this. You hear the hiss. <laughs> And in silence, almost like your ears are popped. You feel the rumble rather than hear it as the other door opens. You almost feel that lifeless sensation. And you can be lifted as zero gravity takes hold of you. But then your suit kicks in, your feet stick to the metal floor. And the vacuum of space awaits you. When there is nothing but your breathing, if you breathe and your heartbeat as the only noise. Uh, I speak conversational more or less every language, so I'll just hold up a hand like this and be like, uh, do you speak sign language? <laughs> Uh, I feel, okay, bye, and then I hit the button and it just goes, Poof. but, so, do we have to, like, climb out on the side, and then I guess they'll, we have to have, you gotta get, oh, you gotta get to the other side of the station to get to the doctor's lab, because it was blocked, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's blocked, and we also need to go, like, up a, a ways, too, so. Yeah, it's on a higher level. Yeah. Okay, spacewalk time. Is that my hand? 
space. <laughs> okay. It would probably be better if we used a rope or something similar. No one oh. can hear you in space. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take my hair and wrap and wrap some of it down. Thuz's hair is really long and moves sometimes and can elongate. They're going to tie some, so which you're, you're stuck with, or just like through the life suit. Like, ah, fuzzy biscuit. <laughs> 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 oh no um they probably have some sort of um like belting mechanisms and and like ropes like secured in the yeah. wall i'll open up one of those panels take it out tie some around my waist offer it just clips Daisy chain yeah yeah pretty much so that way okay. we all stay together and stay safe or get lost. You don't hear that. You just see me very optimistically saying something, and it could be bad or good because Esme says both optimistically. <laughs> <laughs> and the sensation of walking with magnetic boots is, is quite strange because it's it's kind of like those ones where you have to like wiggle your foot first before you lift it. And as you lift it, you feel the draw back down to the metal. So it's almost like you're fighting against gravity, which you've never had to really experience. And then yeah. you put your foot down. He hates this so much. <laughs> is the booty or, or like on a cat thing? Then the, that's why they're wiggling it at you. Do you have... Me- the boots on your hands. <laughs> I meant my feet because they have like hyena feet, so it is that. It's true. <laughs> and you, have you ever seen dogs wear booties for the first time? They like yeah, flick. Yeah. They like flick their feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's how Zeus is kind of trying to walk. It's flat. It's not good. All right. <clears throat> and you step out. You see the great asteroids around you. You see this distant star nearby nebula, floating debris. Debris? I would like to look at the debris. Show me a perception check, please. I got this, I got this. I do not have this. I rolled an eight. It's because you can't smell in space. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> debris, space debris, lots of rocks around here. Look at that Debris. <laughs> <clears throat> and you begin your climb. The climb is not difficult. There's not don't worry, there's nothing here to, that's on fire. There's no asteroids flying at you. Although you, you do see small, almost like asteroid like things kind of hitting this invisible shield and it seems to burn up uh, before it actually hits the space station. You begin your ascent. No climb, no climbing checks needed. Yeah, that's actually a question. Um, does it um look like the outside of the ship like has all its integrity as we're climbing up? Like, I'm. I just want to determine if that debris is from this ship or perhaps another ship that hit that same shield. Look up and roll me a perception check. Sure thing. Um, it's going to be, nah, I have a minus one, I think, to my roll, so 14. You know, that's good enough. It nice. was only a 10. You look up, and the outside of, of the uh, space station, you know, it's all white, yeah. reflective, so you can see it. It's fairly clean. And you get a little bit higher, the area you're going to, and you notice that there's growth on it. <laughs> And you look a little higher and you see a large mound of growth, almost as if it had split the space station in two, one bit dangling off belly, held together by these warping, growing, twisting tendrils that then descends into the area that you want to get to. That's 
That's great. That I wish I could tell my party members that. Oh no. Um. Mm, should have grabbed comms. What the heck were we thinking? <laughs> Oh gosh, um, can I can I try something? Can, okay, so what happens when I go <sighs> against my helmet? Does it actually? Do yes, this this breath. I like to wiggle my arm out and, and, and put a question mark there because your face is very telling right now. Sure, I will allow that because it's quite creative. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go. <laughs> you're saying we need to walk that way i'm like this way you're like uh-huh i'm like okay because i don't know that's that and i'm pointing in the direction of the the <laughs> place where we're going which is also the direction that that debris is floating this is this is this is fine <laughs> Oh gosh! You know what? We didn't bring comms because it's a horror game. This we is are this crazy. is the buy-in that we were looking. For. Let's be real here. We are military officers. Uh -huh. You're telling me that if I don't go tick 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 tick, you all know I mean help. We should know. Most oh clothes. oh, I I will Sounds... know that because I speak every language. Yes, but sound doesn't travel in space. Yeah, it doesn't. It wouldn't be found. Morse code could also is also visual. You know that you could pick things. You could yeah. do that in my hand. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, let's do. Do it. you speak Morse code? I know some. I know enough to get cussed at by my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> nice. It's like that scene from Charlie's Angels where they're all like in a line and tapping each other's <laughs> hand. New one or old one? Oh god, I think it's the new one. I've not seen the new one. Yeah, they I have hear, a hear, they have a scene like that. I hear terrible things about it. It's pretty it's I'm pretty, I, pretty I gotta, I gotta It's a movie, alright. <laughs> <laughs> People put money on it. Yep. <laughs> anyway, what would you like to try to communicate to me with? Apps? Um, a way for us. I was trying to think of a way for us to communicate. Like we, because of all the training that we've been through, yeah. there that there, there should have been. We should, by now, I would have assumed we'd come up with a way to non-verbally communicate with each other. So that's why I was thinking Morse code because mm -hmm. the Morse code and uh, the NATO alphabet is like one of the first things they teach you when you do like basic training. So all of us should have the basic knowledge of that and it would be a way for us to communicate. That makes sense oh, to me. It. Like between lights and taps and blinks, there no matter what, there's a way for you to use it. Yeah. Just got to tap on me and then I'll tap on you. Okay, yes. <laughs> try to tap on Elizabeth. There's a big chassis there, but it might be vibration based. I feel like I would just be feel bad because you're not supposed to tap the glass when you have. <laughs> I hurt you if you have my glass. You always flash your mirror. Mm, that's true. Ooh. That should be helping you. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 I'll shoot out my phaser blasters <laughs> at intervals. The lag alone will just be one big sentence. I won't have to wait for you. <laughs> yeah. But what, what would you like to communicate? Um, do you... Are we still in the anti-magic zone? No, you're be. good now. Yeah, that's off. Oh, we... Oh, gosh. We would get this, like, cool view of, like, the ship's lights coming on everywhere and stuff. And then, like... And then the light should illuminate so much thing. And then Horizon just being like, Oh, I'm back now. <laughs> Where's everyone? Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, let's go. Um... Yeah. So we Ooh. keep going past all of the uh, debris. I I, that, I was asking you a question again. You just pointed behind me. So if anything, yeah. I just tap. Uh, like like 
like what like you like, like you look really like are you just enthusiastic during bleh. uh are you just enthusiastic still during all the time that you've been talking did you actually make a face where i'm inquisitive now what is happening um i'm going to point at the um the bits of debris that are floating slowly toward the place that we are supposed to go and uh uh, tap back. We're in danger. <laughs> We're in danger. <laughs> um, okay. but then start going that way and then keep pointing like, but this is the way we need to go. Need to go. Okay. Well, then that will that, that I will put Zeus on guard, and she they they should also start feeling movement from their little buddy. So we're just going to keep going towards it and what happens when we reach I guess where the culmination of it is like um, so the culmination of it is right at the top okay you're only going to the I have it down here as t2 tier two I imagine that stands for and um <clears throat> and you come to an airlock you know that this is the level where the med bay is there's like tendrils pulsing Ooze, not oozing but pulsing kind of like stuff's traveling along it and then obviously you go up and you see the mass of it on the higher floors mm. okay <clears throat> and as you get to the top obviously all the lights are on and everything you get to the air duct here enter the air duct you notice that there are flashing lights oh no How do you many? go into the air duct how many flashing lights are we looking at? Oh, one, one big red one. Okay. Just oh, like, the like alarm system is basically going off. Mm. Let's go. You can't hear me, but you go in. Yeah. The door closes, and it's like the reverse of what you heard before. The popping goes, and you hear the hiss. You feel the pressure where your suit was all kind of stuck to you release as gravity and pressure are set to normal. And you also hear a very, very distinct <laughs> structural integrity compromised. Quarantine systems enabled. Oh, what a quarantine yeah. thing. Oh, snap. It makes sense that this is the point of origin. If Dr. Atsudo, Atsuko was the person working on the project, it should be the most dangerous here, as was also told to us by Navarre. All right. Uh, we're supposed to be meeting up with them so that we can give them the sample at this point. We've already taken care of everything else. I am starting to suspect they are their own agent. Well, I'm still suspecting that they're our best bet off of this boat. That is also true. We should try to meet them. All right, so in into the much louder alarms we go. Well, the doors open. It did say something about quarantine. Do the doors open like I'm pressing the button? The doors do open. Okay, so they're not shut down yet. That, that's good. But now it definitely isn't going to be so easy to run around anymore. As of right now, like when we, uh, when, when it does open and we go, I guess, into the hallway, can I like poke my head out to see if there's anything moving? Cause now we, now we have to worry about the AIs as well as the clackers. You certainly can. And you pop your head out. And this part of the space station, while it's still space station shaped, you can definitely tell it's a lab. There's a lot more glass, not glass, perspex here, going into various rooms. You see equipment and trays and trolleys. You also see a lot of bodies. You see bodies of the infection, you see bodies of former crew, you see bodies of scientists. Do 
do they all lead to some place? Like, you see the bodies, but are they connected like the other things were? Too? <clears throat> you would deduce with all your training that there has been a massacre here. This is ground zero. Okay. You would also notice that the infection here looks slightly different than it did in your level. Where it was quite organic in nature, this kind of looks like rot, more decay, but also age, like it's black. Sorry, I'm looking at my character sheet. I can use this again. Uh, um, you were, I feel like Elizabeth would have a lot of uh, knowledge about the lab and what kind of like where we could look, seeing as that they worked in one mostly. Yeah, I would uh, be on the lookout for any useful materials and uh... I guess if I recognized any of the departments or like if I was familiar enough with the layout to know where um, like the main offices would be or main lab. So the station itself is kind of like in a circular position and you know that the less important things are on the outer ring and the more important things that need to be secure are on the inner ring. And of course because you've just come from the outside you're on that outer ring and these type of places would be laid out in a kind of cascading maze that goes in and out back and forth but you could always try the vents <laughs> you could always try the vents What could, what could go wrong? And it would be a way for us to move. Honestly, though, it, I want to tie the vents. It makes sense in my brain. We would be able to move around without having to worry about Horizon at the moment. But we could be sticking ourselves inside the mac and cheese tube of doom. Could mm. I send my familiar to scout some of the vents in advance? You certainly could. Okay, I, I will do so. Then just for reminder's sake, what is your familiar? Uh, my familiar is Terry, and Terry is um, a small undulating mass of teeth and tentacles. Lovely, right at home here. So you pop Terry in a vent, the little circular vents open up Terry tumbles in like a little tumbleweed of tentacles and teeth and you just kind of hear that floppy noise as they begin to move around in the metal ducts <clears throat> and you start to get feedback from Terry there's a lot of growth in here. It's spoopy. And it's reactive. In fact, when Terry comes up at what looks like a blocked path, it parts and allows Terry through. Does Terry look, I don't think Terry looks that different than what it looks like. No, they could be cousins. Ah. The vents are quite crowded, and although it doesn't seem to be much bothered by Terry passing through, I don't imagine it would be quite as hospitable to us. Well, we tried before. Perhaps it is because Terry is 
not flesh. It is not reactive. Perhaps if we keep our life suits on, it might not register us. What's the difference between our life suits and Elizabeth's suit? It's still reacted to them. Mm, true. Do you, either of you have any spells that allow us to travel more quietly or have notice? Perhaps without a trace. Yeah. Tell you one second. Let me double check. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, I can go somewhere without a truth. I can't. I can't help nobody else. <laughs> I could try and go through, and I am fairly quick. See if they react the same way to me. I am somewhat human. Human enough. Okay. Human enough. He's splitting the party. Um, just we, a, just a little, for just a little the bit. Scouts to come back. Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> I don't like how you said that. All the bad eyes. Um, you do have, technically you do have Terry in there to back you up. Yeah, it's true. Um, I think I just found a use <laughs> okay, for my, I... no, 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 I just found a use for my marbles. <laughs> I, I asked for like a, just... a crap ton of marbles and I just found a use for them. I'm going to scatter them into the vent and then I'm going to grab a board from somewhere so I can roll along it. It makes a lot of fucking noise, by the way. That's okay. That's oh wait, okay. they're they're proud. reactive to noise, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna scatter them in there. Okay, it's it's fine. So. I you made can choices. Happily find a little ball. Nice. <laughs> I like it, Kai, because it seems be like that like when I, bonus level. when I when I DM you, you double think <laughs> all your choices. <laughs> Do I want to do that? But it's it's uh, cool though. It'll give me a um, um, a substrate to more or less roll on and not have to rely on crawling. So I, I should be able to move quickly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we can say you can yeah. I eat lots of food and I'm sleepy. <clears throat> so yeah, you get through there. The rest huh. of the party wait outside. And we're just going to pause the party right there for a moment because and we're going to concentrate on the vent mm -mm. so as me you glide along your little marble ride into the vents you occasionally come up on a corner that you need to navigate and um you quickly locate the path that uh terry found and what you find with the growth inside is it almost recoils from you? It seems sensitive. Interesting. It's pulsing, it's there. It doesn't lash out at you or try and attack you or attach itself to you. It seems to recoil from your present, making space for you. That's interesting. How far along do you want to travel, by the way? Um, not much farther with, than this without them. Um, I would like to say that I took Terry with me because it would be really good to have an emotional support Terry. <laughs> uh, but also we need some way of communicating. I will let you head back then, but we're going to pause you there. Sure. Party. Esme threw down marbles, which made a loud clacker and racket before they disappeared inside the vent. You just kind of hear the rolling of marbles as they disappear, making noise as they go. And as soon as the vent kind of closed behind them with that electrical you hear a high roaring screeching. 
Come down the hallway. You turn. It is the same humanoid, infected humanoid shapes that you saw before. But now the corruption's black. Their eyes glow and they have large prongs that come out like extra arms, almost like scorpion tails. They move quicker now as you see them charging down the hallway, coming at you. You get ready to fight. And almost as they charge towards you and you get ready to engage them, a door opens and you see the white, hot, blazing light of a laser sword. Carve one, carve two, carve three in exceptionally quick speed. Before that person stops, and you of course see Navarre. It took you long enough. I know you've been in there waiting. Like, the inside dudes is having this whole conversation of, you were in there waiting to come out when it was a cool thing, weren't you? You look outside, but they're like, yeah, they're just like, we've kept up our end of the bargain. Where is yours? Mine. I cleared the way for you. You would have had quite the battle had I not gone ahead. Proof that we have a way out of here. Where's the sample? Where's the proof that we have a way out of here? Where's the cure? Where's proof that you have more room for all of us to get out of here? Didn't you see my ship outside? (laughs) No. Well, that's not my problem then, is it? No, No ship? No cure, no sample, no ride. Esme, it's about this time that you rejoin your party. The way is very, oh, hello again. Um, I have gone through, it uh, reacted the same way to me, which leads me to believe it is not reacting to us either? I am not sure why. My first instinct is to say I am already infected, and it cannot harvest from me. But it seems benign. This seems tense. There's something you should know. It's smarter up here. You see, what I've discovered, doing various little experiments, is it can't infect you truly unless you're dead. So these things, and she gestures with her sword of the creatures that she just cut down, That's its spores, so to speak. It kills you. And then this, and she gestures to the growth, infects you. It's almost like a parasite. You can remove parasites. And they don't taste half bad. I wouldn't recommend eating this. Elizabeth has the sample. I'm not, I'm sorry, I, I'm saying, uh, you have the sample. Yeah. Um, 
this is gonna like turn her head to you and just sort of kind of like nod just even if you just produce some type of random vial it's just like this is one of those like show them that we have the thing it's up to you whether or not you show them like something else or the actual uh, I'll show them the actual thing. I'll show them the flower I have in the vial. Interesting. Almost looks organic. Some might say pretty. But can you imagine a weapon? A weapon that makes use of the dead. Not just your dead, but the enemy's dead. doesn't help anybody. Mm. Matter of opinion, really. Just a bunch of dead. But that's why we need to find a cure, isn't it? And it's almost perfect timing, because as she says that, as they say that, sorry, you feel the whole ship kind of shake you've been speaking over this klaxon horn for a while you're starting to adjust to it drown it out and while you've been hearing about the warning of the quarantine you now hear a new warning gravity matrix failure gravity matrix failure um, you feel the ship shake again. Um, is there what's near us? Is there anything that I could hold on to? Yeah, there's like door handles and stuff you can grab onto. Could we just activate our boots again? Yeah, like in the space walk. You can. All right, I will do that then. Grossly. And then you get that kind of G force drop in your stomach. It's very quick, very minute before it corrects. (coughs) Warning. Altitude descending. Warning. Altitude descending. What? (sighs) This is fine. Probably. I would recommend you get in the vent. Okay. <clears throat> and if someone would kindly look back towards the airlock, you see the outside of space. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you would notice that before, the asteroids were floating in a horizontal pattern. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You now notice that they are in a vertical pattern and some are getting smaller while others are getting larger. I don't even know which way we go in no more. <laughs> it's at this point that Navarre goes, ah. Looks like we haven't got time to dwell about. Uh, as, as much as I can move using gravity boots and I think falling up, I'm gonna try. Um, I guess go back up towards the vent. I'd have to, ah. If I aim myself and turn off my boots, would I go towards the vent? <laughs> oh. So the way, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Space Odyssey. Yes. Okay, well, there's this particular scene in the ship where they're in the ship, traveling through space before Howl goes all crazy. And the entire ship is a donut. Oh, I know the scene. And one guy is like sitting up here and he's just going around in a circle. And another dude's just walking like this. Gravity is pretty much whatever the direction of the ship is. And right now, the ship is falling out of the sky, being pulled 
by the gravitational pull of the nearby giant asteroid. I don't know how to fix that. So we got... <laughs> I can hold out my hand. I think we all agree. All right, just grab my yeah. hand. I'll pull you in the vent. The vent is a much safer yeah. place to be. There are fewer places for you to fall in every direction. <laughs> okay, vent. And then I will help pull Elizabeth up. And I doubt that Navarra actually needs help, but I will still offer a hand. Hey, kids. And then I just pull them up. Uh, so I guess the marching order is uh, you were first as me, and then you pulled me up, and then Elizabeth with Navarre taking up the rear. Yeah. Where are you going? Do you know? I think it. Got a map. I'll pull up my data. No longer accurate. Probably no longer accurate about what's happening. I could be um, mostly the accurate. The flower you had, was that the, was that the, that wasn't the cure. That was just the sampling, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so then we should go to the med bay so that we can try to work out, because I don't think the stuff that's in here is going to help us do anything. You already looked for useful information in here, right? Well, we skipped the med bay. We're heading to uh, Dr. Itsuko's. Sorry, yeah, said med bay. Yeah, it's cool. Um, we're heading to Dr. Atsuko's laboratory, um, which, hold on a data pad, should be able to get general directions there. I don't know. Well, I'm an engineer, so I, it, it stands to reason that I would have um, a, a vent path for the ship. Um, so I, yeah, so so I, I technically have a map there, but this is more like a, it's a utility it's a utility pattern, um, and I'll, I'll draw out my best sort of interpretation of where we should be going, but with full knowledge, this may not be the path that exists any longer. Will we survival check? Oh, and, and guess whatever what? Your, I and whatever have, your oh, sorry, good. <laughs> and whatever your engineer bonus is, you can add that to it as well. Oh, good. I, Wisdom <laughs> is not a thing I have. <laughs> All right. Throw away stat. All right. <laughs> so I have proficiency in that. My proficiency bonus is two. So I'm just rolling with a plus one here. I would like to use my inspiration that I got last session to reroll that natural one. This is the only yes, time please. you yes, will ever do. hear me say something like that. Uh, oh, good. It's a three. So I got a whole four. This is fine. You draw out. If you split that four into twos and put them next to each other, that's a 22. There's a well, you certainly lay out a path as we, I to did. the best of your ability. I am not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> I know a running coming from you. <laughs> you got a PhD in space art history like Elizabeth did. <laughs> I, yeah, I should have let Elizabeth draw this. This is a bad oh, map. Yeah. There's a bunch of them that like run side by side and like, is this the... I can't remember if this is the vent or the space between the vents, but maybe. <laughs> or oh, is it the path that you take? Mm -hmm. Maybe the path Ooh, we took is the friends we made along the way. Eventually you stopped drawing vents and just started venting. What a good use of my inspiration. Let's go. We're all kind of oh, sus for venting. Not a one. Not a one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we set up. Good game, everyone. We're dead. One direction. <laughs> oh, ragrets. I it tried. takes you about an it takes you about an hour before you realize that you're probably going in circles because you're not sure. Yeah, this about is, this. This is fine. About this map. Uh, and by the time that hour passes, the uh, 
warning noise, which you can hear outside the vent as you're traveling along, mm -hmm. changes from altitude falling to crash imminent. <laughs> Oh, 58 <laughs> seconds to crash. This is how Please. long? Uh, 58 minutes till crash. Please <laughs> access escape plans. This is fine. <laughs> and I do believe, as I have reached the end of my prep, that this is where we're going to end the session for this week. Oh, nice. Crash imminent. Hell yeah. Oh, jeez. I think a mouth crash imminent as you said it because I was like I know you're gonna say something imminent and it's gonna be it's gonna be hitting it I just mm. it's gonna be it'll be it. react to meltdown yeah uh, <laughs> once we figure out that we've been going in circles uh, like Esme just you have yeah Esme just like <laughs> sighs and goes I am so sorry we've been going in circles I think I know the problem and they like reach up into their eyeball and like turn it 180 degrees and go that's better <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the ship's all rotating. I can totally yeah. see it. It makes sense. <sighs> <laughs> oh no! <sighs> Eyeball stuff. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> They're a it's robot, right? right? <laughs> so it's not like a real yeah. eye. It's like a, a no. Fake it's eye. like a glass eye. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna move my camera, uh, my microphone up, so you can have to watch it. Mm -hmm. appear and disappear like it's like magic <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Okay. oh did you have fun everybody yeah i did hi i was very spooked <laughs> lost us an yeah. hour this is fine <laughs> time is not real especially not in space and you've got 58 minutes Oof. until crash imminent so in gold heart tradition before we do our little plugs and everything please tell me what your favorite parts were of this session and um, because it's me we're going to do the game that i always do because i don't like picking who goes first and it's the last person who touches their top lip i'll just go on my camera yeah <laughs> <laughs> just go, just go. i like the chesty boy <laughs> Justy boy was good. Justy boy. Justy boys. Uh, our Lost Horizon cover band, the Chesty Boys. <laughs> no, you tell me, flesh lines. Gosh, now it like it brought to mind. Um, like I haven't played Dead Space, but I I know the aesthetic. But for me, that was like, gosh, there's like a there's an old. Uh, it's not that old. It's like eighties, late eighties, early nineties Beowulf movie where um she like I, I her rib cage like opens up into spider legs and i'm just like that's uh, this kind of creature was like a, a, a kind of like um an amalgamation of two monsters from dead space there's this giant large lumbering creature that's kind of got like a rib cage chest and then like if you don't kill it quick enough, like you don't make it explode, it falls over, its chest pops open and there's like loads of little ones that then it infects all the bodies and then all of a sudden you panic because like everything is about to kill you. Oh and yeah. The one, and then they're on the door, it's like these pregnant ones and they're a person and they're there moaning and they're in pain and agony. And they're the only ones that don't sound like animalistic, they sound human, so it's the worst thing. And then they spit out these like weird fleshy egg sacs with like tentacle arms that then attack you. Um, and the only way to kill it is then to cut off its attachments and then it dies. <laughs> So it's kind of like an amalgamation of both of those. I'm going to go look up more, more Dead Space Monsters for descriptions for the finale. Solid. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I like... Solid game. I would... I I would... Like... Oh, sorry. Go. Bruce. <laughs> it's your turn. No, go for it. Oh, you know, I, I was just about to say, I like the chesty boys. Great. Okay, I'm ready for round two. Ready for round two? All right, I'm going to take my rings off because we're serious. Okay. Yeah. Rings are coming off. Ugh, too many rings because I'm wearing midi rings. <laughs> the last person to touch their cheek. Any cheek. Ow. That was me, <laughs> Velvet. 
Uh, the, the prehensile veins were my favorite part. <laughs> was just all your favorite parts the gory grossness? Was, was... Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie, mine might also be gross. <laughs> Prehensile veins, you know that that's the anniversary album from the Chesty Boys. <laughs> I love it. Good. Go on then, Vans. What was your gross favorite moment? I. It really was your just the descriptions of it. It was weird. Um, my favorite one was just it was actually all the noises that you made when you finally <laughs> did like the creepy like clicky noise. That was actually my favorite part. I I'm audio. I'm, it doesn't mean anything until I hear the sound effect. <laughs> um, what about you? What was your favorite part? My what favorite part actually was running this because I do horror. Everyone knows I do. I try to do horror depending on who my players are. <laughs> and I, but I'm classic horror. But this was the first time that I've done sci-fi horror, and um. And yes, it's very heavily influenced by Dead Space, but it's because Dead Space is a very good game and everyone should go play it. Um, <clears throat> and I have not played it. I just watched Jason play it and then screamed. Yeah. Go, um, go get wrecked like me because you're supposed to shoot off the limbs, but I always go for the head. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't have good hand-eye coordination, so I just like watching. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that series. And, and when <clears throat> I found out I had to take over, I was just like, quick, horror. Oh, I'm no good at psychological horror, really. Oh, I can, but I have to set it up in advance, but I haven't set any of this up and I don't know whether to do it. Dead space. Just dead space. Someone might have an eyeball scene. That's that's all I'm gonna mention. Okay. The very infamous eyeball scene from Dead Space. <laughs> I mean you, you missed actually no. You you missed our first attempt at an eyeball scene, but there oh, okay. were no eyes, so there oh, okay. were no eyes. It was they no. were gone. No eyes. You know, <laughs> I did get a request to to hurt someone in the group. Uh, I will attempt to do that with our finale. <laughs> I would attempt to gross you out as well nice. as the finale. I was, um, I was passed out, and then and then I couldn't say anything. <laughs> so you should know that horror gloss and gadgets. When you do the wrong thing, I will smack you, and that was me smacking you. <laughs> what I do. <laughs> You charged ahead before thinking about it. <laughs> I just wanted to karate chop it in the neck, but nothing serious. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I had a ton of fun, so thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. And I can't wait to do this. Are we playing next week? Is it next week that we're playing? Uh, yeah, I think next week is our finale. Yeah, Excellent. So next week is the finale. Oh, my God. Amazing. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you everyone for all the subs and um, enabling us to hit all of our goals, uh, getting closer for our goals. By the way, you will see in our bottom right corner, we have some goals. There are our goals for the rest of the month. Um, not many, not not extortionate or anything um, like that. Um, so yeah, thank you. I have some good news. A game that has been 12 months in the making, almost 12 months in the making, Ulara is coming to dun, Gold dun, Heart dun. very soon. DM Tolly is coming back with Vengeance. Um, so that will be coming soon. Date to be announced. Please watch our Twitter. Uh, Descent into Avernus. Yes, I'll be getting straight back into the DM seat probably. Proper, proper there. Proper there. How it? My tongue's okay. swelling. I'm getting tiring. I'm tiring. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yes, Descent into Avernus, that's coming back soon. Date to be announced real soon, because that's that's got to come back real soon. Um, and yes, if, uh, if you weren't here earlier, please come watch Mother.